In this video, we're going to learn about immutable versus mutable objects in Python. So in Python, all objects are either immutable or mutable. If the object is mutable, we can change the internal state of the object. If the object is immutable, we cannot change the internal state of the object. Let's go over some examples. So everything in Python is an object. So here, if we have x is equal to four, four is an object of type int, which represents the integer four. And x is a variable which references this object. There's a function called id, which will return a unique id for each object. So here, if we have id and we pass it x, this is going to return the unique integer for this object here that x is referencing. We could output that using print. So here we'll have print and we'll output that unique integer. We'll save the program and run it. And we'll get this unique integer here. Now this integer is typically the memory address of the object, but that's technically decided by the Python implementation. So we'll put here id x and then colon then we'll have here y is equal to x. So when we do this, it's not like y is storing a copy of the value four. What happens is y is now going to reference the same object that x is referencing. And we can see that because here, if we print the ID of what y is referencing, we'll see it's the same ID as x. So here we'll have ID y, we'll save the program and run it and we see the id of the object that x is referencing is equal to the id of the object that y is referencing and that's because both variables reference the same object now int objects are immutable what that means is if here i have x is equal to x plus two what's going to happen is a new int object is going to be created and x is going to reference that new int object because x is referencing the int object four. Here we use the plus operator for addition and we add two to four. Two is really going to be its own object and four plus two is going to give us a new object six. X is going to reference that new object and we can see that too. So here, if we have print and x colon x, we're going to get six. We can also output the ID of the object that x is referencing, and we'll also output the ID of the object that y is referencing. So we'll have here print ID y colon, and we'll have ID y. So then if we save this and run it, we see that x is now six but the object that X is referencing has changed before the ID of that object ended with 368. Now it's 432. So what's happened is when we added together X and two, this actually created a new object. It didn't modify the existing int object that X was referencing. And that's because int objects in Python are immutable we don't actually change the data stored in an int object. When we do operations like addition, what happens is a new int object is potentially created. And we can also see y is still referencing the same object as before. Now ints are not the only type of immutable objects in Python. So strings are also immutable. So here, if we have test, is equal to the string ABC. We could output the ID of the object that test is referencing with print and then ID test colon. And we'll have here ID test. Then if we concatenate to test the string one, two, three to give us ABC one, two, three, we could output test and we could again output the ID of test with ID test colon and then ID test. And if we save this and run it, 
we see that test is now set to the string abc123, but the ID of the object that test is referencing has changed. And that's because just like int objects, string objects are immutable in Python. Now, not all objects in Python are immutable. So for example, lists are immutable. We can actually change the contents of lists. Let's try that. We'll have here numbers is equal to one, two, three in a list. Then we'll output the ID of numbers. We'll have here print ID numbers colon, and we'll output the ID of the object that numbers is referencing. Then we'll append four to numbers. So we'll have numbers dot append four. This should give us the list with the values one, two, three, and four. We'll output here numbers, and we'll again output the object ID of the object that numbers is referencing. So here we'll have ID numbers colon and then ID numbers. So we'll save this and run it. And we can see here the list has changed. We now have one, two, three, four. But notice this, the ID of the object that numbers is referencing hasn't changed, even though the list has changed. So that is a mutable object we can actually change the values and the data stored by the object. Now, sometimes the exact distinction between mutable and immutable can get a bit tricky in Python. So for example, this list here is really storing references to four int objects, one, two, three, and then four. That's what it's actually storing is references to other objects and we can change the references that it stores by say appending new objects into the list. But we also have other types in Python like tuples. So tuples are actually immutable objects. We can't actually change what the tuple references, but we can potentially change the values and the data of the objects that the tuple references if those objects are themselves mutable. So let's go over an example. What we'll have here is a tuple with a list. We'll have here a tuple with a list one and then five and then six. So this tuple has a list here. We could actually change this list because the list is mutable. We can't change though what the tuple is referencing. So we couldn't have this index reference a new list entirely. Let's go over that. Here we'll have print tuple with list. Then we'll output the ID of this object that tuple with list is referencing. So we'll have print and then we'll have ID and we'll pass it tuple with list. Then we'll have here tuple with list at the index zero and we'll append to that list the value two. Then we'll again output tuple with list and we'll again output the ID of tuple with list. Then we'll save this and run it. And we get here this tuple and we get this ID. Then we modify this list and we get this ID again for the tuple. And that's because we didn't actually change the tuple. The tuple is still referencing the same list and the same ints as before. What we did change is the list that the tuple is referencing, which is a different thing because that list is mutable and we can change that. So if we actually try to assign a new list to the tuple at the index zero, that's not going to work. So here, if we had is equal to the new list containing four, five, and six, and then we save this and try to run it, we'll get an error here. It says tuple object does not support item assignment. And that's because tuples are immutable. So in Python, we have that list dictionaries sets are mutable 
as well as user-defined classes that we create ourselves. But that's ultimately going to be decided by the way the class is defined. And we have that numbers like integer and float and so on, and tuples and strings and frozen sets are immutable. Now, one important area where this distinction comes up is when passing arguments to functions. So here we'll have a function that's going to add one to an int value. We'll have here def, and then we'll have add. The function is going to have a parameter m, and inside the function, we'll add one to m. Then we'll create a variable y, and we'll assign to it five, and we'll call add, and we'll pass it y. Then if we output y afterwards, and save the program and run it, we'll get here five. So y is still five. And that's because Python has what's called pass by assignment. So y is really storing a reference to an object of type int, which represents the value five. When we call add and we pass it y, what's being passed is not the value five. What's being passed is the reference as a value. So M is actually going to reference the same object that Y is referencing. Then here, when we have M is equal to M plus one, a new int object for the value six is being created and M is going to reference that object. We could see this if we output the IDs of things. So here we'll have print and we'll output the ID of the object that Y is referencing then we'll output here the ID of the object that M is referencing before and after. So we'll have print ID M colon and then ID M and then we'll have print with ID M colon and then ID M. Then we'll save this and run it. And we can see the ID of the object that M was initially referencing is the same as the ID of the object that Y is referencing. And that's because that reference was what was actually passed to the function. Then when we change M by adding M plus one together and assigning the result to M, M is now referencing a new object. So we didn't actually change the object that Y is referencing because int objects are immutable. If we did actually want to have y modified by this function, the way to do it would be to have the function return the value of m and assign the results back to y. So we could have here return m, and then when we call the function, we could assign the results, the return value, back to y. Then if we save this and run it, now we'll get the y is six. Now let's contrast this with passing a mutable object to a function. So here we'll have a list of uppercase letters. We'll have uppercase is equal to a and b and c. Then we'll have a function called add to list. And this function is going to have a parameter letters. And what we'll do is append to letters the letter X. Now, if we call add to list and we pass it uppercase, and then we output uppercase afterwards, we'll find this actually changes the list uppercase. So we'll save this and try it. And here we get ABCX as the list uppercase. And what's going on is that when we pass uppercase to the function, what's really going on is letters is being assigned to reference the same object that uppercase is referencing. So we could see that. We could output here the ID of the object that letters is referencing. And we'll do the same thing down here. We'll have print with ID uppercase colon and ID and then uppercase. And we'll save our program and run it and we'll see the ID of both are the same. So that's why if we modify the list in the function, 
it's going to modify the list outside the function because both letters and uppercase are referencing the same list object. Now, many languages have a concept called pass by reference. This is different. So letters doesn't use pass by reference. Letters is a variable like uppercase and letters has been assigned to reference the same object as uppercase, but we could change which object letters is referencing. And if we do that, it's not going to have any effect on the object that uppercase is referencing. So here, if we had letters is equal to a new list with X, Y, and Z, now letters is going to reference a different list entirely. It's not like this is going to change uppercase. So we'll save this and try it now. And now uppercase is still the list ABC. And we see that letters and uppercase now reference different objects. So be aware of that. Pass by assignment is not equivalent to pass by reference. Pass by assignment is kind of like passing a reference by value. So this is the difference between mutable and immutable objects in Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.